8, 16 or 32 GB of unified memory. Tough choice. No matter how hard Apple tries to convince you that it's worth every single penny, there's actually a great chance to waste money. And this is your guide to pick the best RAM and avoid probably the painful mistake of picking the wrong one. When choosing a laptop, we need to pay attention to the CPU, GPU, SSD, RAM, but the RAM specifically causes a lot of doubts because firstly, it is not cheap, and secondly, at a first glance, it doesn't seem to be an important element on which you want to save money. But what is RAM really? RAM stands for Random Access Memory. You cannot write files to it, but the system can temporarily store the information about some processes in there to speed up your workflow. This is a type of short-term memory that stores data about all processes running at the moment. I know it sounds boring, so to put it simply, Imagine that you opened a bunch of tabs in a browser and then decided to have a cup of tea for an hour or two. And when you decide to return back to your laptop, you see that it's working as good as before. And all because the processor doesn't need to reprocess each task, it simply extracts data about already open tabs from the RAM. That is, the process doesn't start again, but is already warmed up, waiting for the next step. And once you close your previous process, there's the same amount of memory to store the information about your next process. And this repeats over and over again. The unified memory on the M1 MacBook is not exactly the same as what we've seen before. Four, since RAM, SSD, CPU and GPU are placed in a single M1 chipset, all these components get direct access to information in a single way. That is, RAM does not work independently, but in close symbiosis with the rest of the system, thereby increasing the speed by about two times. To simplify, not going into more technical details, this means that the memory performance of the new MacBook Pro is significantly improved not only compared to the previous MacBook Pro models, but also to most PCs. 8GB of unified memory is not exactly the same as the usual 8GB on some PCs, for example. At first glance, everything is very simple. The more you pay, the more you get. It seems obvious, but it's actually not. If we're talking about the M1 MacBooks, then this approach to get extra gigabytes of RAM can eat up your extra money. Well, you don't think that Apple produces so many models and configurations to save you money. No, they do this to make money. 8, 16 and 32 gigabyte are three types of unified memory that are really created for different people, otherwise Apple's policy simply wouldn't work and we would get a lot of disappointed users. Imagine that you live in a village with a bad road and you have a Ferrari. Well, or you have a gorgeous highway nearby and the only thing you have is an old bicycle. But the parallel is not entirely accurate because a bicycle is quite suitable for many. There are a lot of tasks where it performs incredibly well. 8 gigabyte is enough to browse the web, edit photos or simply work with documents. Of course, games like chess and cards are not going anywhere. But if you often have to use programs for design, then it's better using more power-friendly alternatives alternatives such as Blender and Photoshop projects. But with something like Maya or Unreal Engine 5, I would recommend skipping the 8GB option. But if it seems to you that everything is clear, 8 is half of 16, so well, that's not so. If we're talking about exporting data, for example, 50, 42 megapixel photos from Lightroom, the 8 gigabyte MacBook Pro does the job in three minutes exactly, while the 16 gigabyte model finishes a little faster, two minutes and 43 seconds. The 32 gigabyte MacBook Pro exports data just four seconds faster than the 16 gigabyte model. So chasing more GBs with minimal tasks can seriously come out as a disappointment but if, for example, you're into video editing or planning to do it, then the question is not about seconds, but decent minutes. I decided to render out an 8K video in 4K in Final Cut Pro and the results are quite surprising. The 8GB MacBook Pro finished in 13 minutes and 57 seconds, which may not seem too long. You can read a book during this time, but the 16GB MacBook Pro finished in 5 minutes and 59 seconds. Two and a half times faster. And what if you render out many videos per day? And if this is your job and your income depends on it? Well, if we compare the 16 and 32GB MacBook Pros with the M1 Pro, we get 
get the following. When exporting 8K ProRes RAW video, the 16GB MacBook Pro was only one second slower than the 32 gigabyte model. And one could say that it's luck, and how do you know, maybe these tasks are best optimized for all types of RAM. But in the MacStack Xcode benchmark, the difference in performance between MacBook Pros with different RAM turned out to be something more than just luck. This test simulates the code compilation process and demonstrates how long it will take the computer to process a particular fragment. 8 gigabyte M1 MacBook Pro, 136 seconds, the 16 gigabyte model 122 seconds yes there is a gap between the younger and older brother but it doesn't seem to be critical but with the m1 pro macbooks 16 and 32 we get the following the 16 gigabyte model complied the project in 137 seconds compared to the 32 gigabyte model in 115 seconds when editing photos videos audio, encoding and decoding video, the 32GB model was almost no better than the 16GB model. So therefore, 32GB is more suitable for those who have multiple heavy projects running at the same time, rendering 8K videos, working in Unreal Engine, After Effects, or working with a very large number of layers in Photoshop. If that is what you need, and the willingness to create no snow limits, then 32GB of RAM is your tool. But not everyone needs this serious hardware. Most people aren't going to create a virtual revolution, but want to satisfy everyday needs. And here the choice between 8 and 16 is much more difficult because the tasks are more flexible than the choice between 32 and the rest. Although it depends on how you look at it. Let's take a look at the system requirements. Adobe Photoshop and Audition requires 16 gigabytes or more, but Adobe Premiere asks for 6 gigabytes for HD media and 32 gigabytes for 4K media or more. Archicad from 8 gigabytes for designing private houses, from 16 gigabytes for apartment buildings, and from 32 gigabytes for large buildings. Autodesk 3ds Max from 8 gigabytes and more. So virtually every program asks for at least 16 gigabytes of RAM, a kind of golden spot for for running heavy applications on your computer. This option is also ideal for artists who work in Photoshop, Blender, and Adobe Premiere. Hence, why do we need 8 and a big brother on 32? The answer to this question led me to realize that the seemingly rough comparison of a Ferrari and a bicycle is very close to the truth. Both of them are neither bad nor good, just different tasks. And it may seem like taking the 16 gigabyte model, but the prices are noticeably different. Here is what I recommend. The 13 inch MacBook Air or Pro is great for office and home use, working with text and photos, sometimes 4K videos, and some light graphics tasks. 8 GB of RAM is what you need. The 14 or 16 inch MacBook Pro is more focused on professional work with graphics, video, sound, and like everyday use, not just once a month or once a week. And if you get paid for this work, then go with at least a 16 or 32 gigabyte model. MacBook Pro for complex tasks like filmmaking, production, architecture, design studios. In short, if you're into this, then you probably already know what you need. And that is from 32, 64 gigabytes and above. But since most of the tasks are doing great on the 16 gigabyte model, you know, do whatever you want with this information. But if you're still not quite sure which MacBook model to get, then check out this video and also this one. Smash the like button if this video was helpful to you and see you in the next one.